Trial and error is another approach that one can take to factoring polynomials. Generally, with the harder factoring problems, the grouping method is a better way to break down the problem into simpler steps. But with some of the easier polynomials, like the example we have here that starts with just an x squared, trial and error will get us to a factored form of the polynomial more quickly than the grouping method. The idea is that we want to think of the polynomial as the result of a FOIL, meaning that the first term would come from F in FOIL, the last term would come from L in FOIL, and the middle term is going to come from adding the outer and inner products. <clears throat> Since this polynomial starts with x squared, we know that that first term, F, must have come from x times x. So I could already start drawing a pair of factors, both of which start with x. And all I need to figure out is how to end these factors. Because my last term is 24, I need to consider all possible factorizations of 24. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6 are all of my possible factorizations of the number 24. I just need to choose the factor pair that's going to work to give me outer plus inner equals 11x. It turns out in this case 3 and 8 work, and both of these are going to be positive because we do have a positive product and a positive sum. So if I write in plus 3, and plus 8 here, I can then check by using FOIL just to make sure that I do get back the polynomial that I started with. f is coming from x times x, which is x squared. o is coming from the outer product, which is x times 8 i is coming from the inner product, which is 3 times x, and l is my last product, that's the product of the last terms in each of those binomials, that is going to be plus 24. Then I add my outer and inner together to get x squared plus 11x plus 24. So the trial and error method is sort of a guess and check, but it's educated guesses that we try filling in what we think will work into the positions of the two binomials and then we FOIL to see if we get back our original polynomial. It's a great method to use on something that starts with a simple x squared because we know exactly how both of these factors start and it's easier to do the outer plus inner calculation. Another example of a polynomial that might be a little bit easier than some would be 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Not nearly as easy as the one we just did, <clears throat> but at least we have prime numbers for our first and last coefficients, so that does reduce the number of things we need to consider. It is still true that 2x squared pretty much has to come from 2x times x, and it's also true that the last term has to come from 3 times 1, and one of those needs to be positive, the other one negative. So what we can do is just start trying out some combinations down here and do a quick outer plus inner to see if we get the right middle term. If I were to put plus 3 as the second term in the first factor and minus 1 as the second term in the second factor, my outer product would be 2x times negative 1, which is negative 2x, and my inner product would be x times 3, which is plus 3x. And when I combine these, I get simply x. What I'm doing with each of these is comparing to my actual middle term to see if I get the same thing. In this case, I have x instead of 5x, so I say, nope, this isn't working. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to try is swapping the 3 and the 1. So I'll go with plus 1 in the first factor 
and minus 3 in the second factor. With our second guess, we can see that it's coming out closer. This time we have negative 5x when we want positive 5x. So all we need to do to remedy this, since this is just off by sine, it's the correct number, is just swap the signs on our two terms. So leave the numbers in place, but swap these so that we have a minus on the first one and a plus on, a second, on the second one. So our final factorization should have a minus 1 here and a plus 3 here. And if we do an outer plus inner calculation now, or you could do the whole FOIL just to be sure, we get 2x times 3 is 6x, negative 1 times x is minus 1x, which becomes 5x. And that is equal to our exact middle term. So the trial and error method is great if you can keep track of some of these calculations in your head instead of writing them down every time like we did here. But it still works okay if you do have to write them down as long as you can keep track of what you have tried and what you haven't tried so that you won't find yourself trying the same things over and over again. It's a great method for simpler polynomials because it can get you to the factorization much more quickly than the grouping method and with less writing. But it's not a good method if you find that it's very frustrating or difficult to keep track of all of these different combinations.